Hi, my name is Alan McGuire. I'm on the Linux networking team in Oracle, and I want to talk about data centric tracing with BPF. So within the Linux kernel, we've got some great tools for tracing control flow. So ftrace is one great example of this. And here's I've shown the function graph tracer, which makes our control flow actually look like code. So it's very easy to see what's going on. Um, at the same time, debuggers like GDB have excellent support for examining data. So you know we can print data structures in depth, and we can take a look at what's going on. Um, so the aim here is to bring those two together. So we want to bring the, that power of debuggers to visualize data, um, to examine data in depth using BPF. So the key to all this is the BPF type format, which ships with many distros now and provides descriptions of data types, functions, and variables. Um, you can check if your kernel is built with BTF by looking for syskernel BTF. Um, and there should be a VM Linux file there, which has the, the BTF associated with the kernel. And there should be module specific ones there if you've got module BTF too. Um, so libbpf has provided for a while a way of dumping data structure descriptions. Um, and this is often used in BPF um, if you're creating a header um, such as VM Linux.h, um, this describes all the kernel data structures. You've probably used this before. And the idea there is basically that rather than have to include a bunch of different header files, you can dump that um, header description and include it in your BPF programs. And it saves all the hassle associated with the various issues that can come up when you, you include a bunch of different files um, from the kernel. So um, recently we've added, extended this functionality to support dumping not just type information, but typed data. So we use the information about the types to dump a representat representation of the provided data um, using that BDF information associated with its type. So here's an example. So you can see here, we're dumping a struct SK buff and we, we're dumping the type information and the actual data associated with the type as well. So you can see both. Um, here's the function signature for that function. So you have to give it a BTF dump, um, the type ID that we want to dump, um, the data that we're using to dump, and the size of the data that's valid associated with that. Um, and then there's a bunch of options which include things like the indent string we use. By default, it's a tab, but you can have a space or a number of spaces. Um, the indent level to start, um, display at, um, compact mode, which is effectively just getting rid of the new lines and extra white space. Um, you can skip the names of, of uh, type members as well if you want to have a very compact type, but that can be useful for small types. Um, for big types, it kind of gets a bit hard to track what's where. Um, so here's an example. So in the compact form, you can see here, we've just stripped all the, most of the white space away. And in the skip names form, we can't, we can't see the names there. So we just get the type data. Um, so to use the API, you need to get your BTF um, via libbpf, find kernel BTF for the kernel BTF, and then you, there's other ways of getting module BTF as well. Um, you need to provide a callback function, which is going to display um, or save your um, dumped information. So in this case, we're just printing it out. Um, so you need to create a BTF dump then using um, your BTF and your, your function for dumping the, the data. Um, then you have to get the BTF ID that you want that you're going to dump. So in this case, we're looking up an SK buff um, to get the type ID associated with that. Then we finally, when we have our data from the kernel, um, we call BTF dump dump type data with the dump, the type ID we want to dump, um, the data itself, the size of that data, and any additional options around display. Um, so on the kernel side, you're going to want to keep track of the size of the data as well as copying the data to user space via um, a perf event or ring buff, you want to know the size because in some cases you're going to be dealing with large data structures which you're not going to be capture, be able to capture all of. So being able to let user space know you don't have the whole picture is, is, is useful. Um, so I created an example um, called case snoop, which is basically a way of snooping entry and return and showing arguments and return values. Um, and so to just see what, what, it, what it can do, um, here's an example of, we just get the function signature for IP send SKB, and then we want to trace IP send SKB. So we're going to see the entry and return with all the fun the arguments and return values displayed. Um, you can spe specify um, a particular argument by name. So in this case, we just want the SKB. Um, you can also specify a member. It just supports one level of um, membership. So you can you can dive into the, to the socket um, within the SKB there. Um, you can see that. Um, you can specify the return value. So we use the keyword return for the return value. Um, you can also specify a, a set of functions that you want to see, but only if they're called um, loosely in, in, in that specific order. So for example, if a call to TCP send message ends, ends up calling TCP transmit SKB either directly or indirectly, and that in turn ends up calling IP output, we want to see the output 
um, for all of those. So this is useful in cases where you might have a, a, sig a stack signature for a particular failure and you want to dive in and see what the arguments and return values are associated with that failure. Um, so it can also support modules um, by using module BTF. So if module BTF is available, you can do that. Here we can see we're tracing an I IWL Wi-Fi function. Um, so hopefully that gives you a sense of what you can do. Um, there's a lot more that can be done in the future, of course. Um, but for now, you can see more information about BTF, um, the type dump capabilities, um, patches um, on the BPF uh, mailing list, and the case new patches on the BPF mailing list are there if you want to dive into that and actually see how some of this is done in practice.